going to head and join a meeting. Uh, this is the meeting ID. And I'm going to make sure that my video is off, but I'm going to keep my audio on. Join. And so you see here, I am waiting for participants to arrive. And today's video is going to show what it looks like when we have somebody on the Zoom call. I can have the option to start my video right now. Hi. So that when they jump on, they can see me. That's your choice. Again, on the bottom to stop the video. So we're just going to wait for uh, somebody to call in. And then we can show you how to navigate the screen and the Zoom call when you have somebody else on the line. Hi, Laura. Hi. So I started my video, but I was just showing that I was waiting for you to arrive. And I had my sound on, which was really great, so that when you came in, everybody could hear the doorbell sound. Um, that yeah. can get really distracting for people who are having multiple people on the call. So definitely something to kind of think about or to just prepare for. <laughs> that might be a little bit different than when you're having your typical phone call and conversations. So how are right. you today? Mm -hmm. Good. How are you? Nice. Sometimes there's a lag, I think, also for people, depending on your internet connectivity, how many people are on the site, how many people are on your call. But right now it seems to be working out really well. Mm-hmm. So for those of uh, anybody who's watching, I'm in Hawaii and Laura's in D.C., so we are able to kind of do this. Laura, your name is popping up down here in the bottom left-hand corner, and it has uh, some bars next to it, which I think are showing, I don't know, is that your connectivity or mine? Uh, <laughs> Great. <laughs> okay. So up in the top right-hand corner, you guys will see that it says Gallery View. So if I click on Gallery View, I now have the ability to see Laura's face and my face. Laura, on your end as the participant, can you also switch that to gallery view? Yeah. And now you see it should be like yeah, side by side. Yeah, split screen. That's kind of neat. I like it. It's, yeah. It's pretty cool. Um, and then there's also ways to get this um, on Facebook Live. So there's lots of ways to integrate this platform or this software with other softwares as well. If I go back to, um, I can click to expand it. So I just clicked in the top right hand corner, which expanded the whole screen. And now we can see one another. Now, if I go to share my screen, there's nothing open. So I can't share anything with Laura except for my desktop, which is going to show us what's open on my desktop, like the Zoom box, uh, my background, my folders. It's going to um, only be useful if you have something open. So let me open something. Uh, we have here a resume. <laughs> That's fine. Mm -hmm. And so now we see that that document's open. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back up to and hit new share, or I have the option to hit stop share. So stop is if you don't want to share anything at all. Um, a new share, you can select something new. Laura, I'm going to try the whiteboard with you. Okay. Do you see the whiteboard? Yeah. So far, so good. So for those of you who are watching my screen in this recording, you'll see that now the chat, um, the videos, are on top of the whiteboard. I can just grab this box and I can move it around. I can get it to the right hand side of my screen, to the left hand side of my screen. I can make it so I see the speaker much larger. Again, I can go so I see the thumbnail videos. I can go so I see only the other person and not myself. And then you could minimize it all together if you were feeling distracted from seeing yourself or other people. So there's those ways to do that. If you move it to the top of the computer, like I just did to the screen, it'll now be out in horizontal form instead of vertical form. So that's just something to kind of keep in mind as you're moving things around. All right, Laura, let's draw. And um, I think I'm able to draw. And I don't know if we can, you see what I'm putting up? Check marks. Nice. And then there's the eraser. So I can get rid of that. I can change the color of things. So, oh, I guess not the color of the check mark. So <laughs> I don't know. But there's a lot of features here. And we already showed that if you hit save, you can save this as a permanent product afterwards. So if you're doing drawings or if you're doing answers and somebody's writing down, you can text also. So I can say, you know, aloha to Lara. She should be able to see that. And you can't yeah. move it around right now because it still thinks I'm looking for text boxes. So if you hit select, 
then you're able to reposition everything that's on the screen. So Laura gets a check next to her name. She gets two checks and I want to erase the third one. That would be how that would work. So, okay. all right, Laura. And from my end, I can only see what you're doing on the whiteboard. I can't see any of the controls at the top. Okay. Just, you know, for those out there who are watching this. Right. So people who are watching, if you are running the training, you will be able to see all these functions and features. But the people who are who are um, your participants, people who are attending your webinar or your meeting are going to see just what you produce. So, Laura, I'm going to stop sharing the screen and see if you can share your screen. Um, and so narrate for us what you're doing since we can't see your screen. Oh, sorry. Yes, you can't see my screen yet. So it says share at the bottom. So I go down to the bottom and click on share. And then I have Google Chrome open. So I'm just going to open the Google Chrome, click on that, and then hit share. So now what you see or what you should see is the uh, big word Zoom on my post attendee check-in from Zoom. Yes, we do see um, that. And then I can switch windows so I can go, this is, you know, my Google Drive and see all that's there. Um, are you seeing the changes as I do this? Yeah, it jumped right over when you click. So it's all in live time. There's no lag. It seems to be just fine. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, my continuing ed credits that I'm working on. Um, and then I now have all of the controls at the top. So I'm going to move this out of the way, the videos. Um, and I now have, uh, you know, the whiteboard and participants and annotate remote control. I don't even know what that does. Yeah, so we can't see that at all on your side. So again, whoever has the ability to share the screen, they're the ones who are seeing all the toolbars, all the functions. Right now, Laura, I just see you moving your mouse around a lot. So I right. don't know that you're moving that those phantom videos out of the way like we could see on my screen. So that's really helpful that you were able to share what it looks like for the participant and for me to be able to share what it looks like for the host. I'm going to go ahead and take back controlling of the screen now. Um, it says this is going to stop your screen sharing. So if other people aren't already clicking off or stop share, then I would just hit continue and it would kick them off. And then we would have the ability to toggle between documents. So she's not seeing my whole background right now. She's just seeing this document. And then mm -hmm. we have the ability to stop that share and then just go back to talking and having it, having it be the two of us. So that's just a quick way to do it, um, to talk about what it could look like. Laura, in the other video I made, I talked about how to um, invite people, how to use the share function, how to record, mm -hmm. um, even talked about how to use your sound on a phone instead of on the laptop or on your computer. Um, but I do want to click on the manage participants because it's a little bit different now that I have a participant. So yeah. let me uh, do that. So I can see on my screen, and Laura, I know that you can't see what I'm seeing right now, but I can yeah. see the chat box and so or the participant box. So it has my name. It says I'm the host. I have my microphone on, my video on. It shows me that you're here and that you have your microphone and your video on as well. I can hit mute all, and now it's telling me current and new participants are going to be muted. That means anyone who joins the call. So Laura is now automatically muted. Laura can unmute herself if I set that that setting um, and that feature and otherwise it's set to where I have to unmute it as the host. So again, we talked about some of that in the other video as well. Um, there, So here it is. I just click on more on my end and it shows mute, mute participants on entry, allow them to unmute themselves. So if I take that off, Laura should not be able to unmute herself. Laura, can you try? So that's really helpful when you're having a presentation and you're having hundreds or a lot of people jump on the call. If you're using a free Zoom account, I think it's limited to 40 minutes and there's also some limitations on the number of people. I don't know if that's changed now in the COVID times, um, but that's typically how it runs. So um, th that, would be, that would be really helpful for when you have lots of people coming or when people get distracted with all the background noise. If I turn that off and I still have everybody muted, then, Laura, you should now be able to unmute yourself if you wanted to chime in. Yes, now I can. Perfect. Awesome. 
So I'm going to go ahead and just um, no longer manage the participants. I just get rid of that view by clicking on that button again, and it takes me back to my side-to-side -side view with Lara. So I think that covers what it can look like when you have somebody calling in, and we tried to show you both sides of what it's like to be the host and the participant. Um, mm -hmm. We will consider making new videos if there's other questions you have. Again, no affiliation with Zoom, but we know that many of us are trying to figure this out, and some of us have had a lot of practice uh, doing so, made a lot of mistakes, trial and error throughout the, the time. Uh, the most important thing I can tell you is to stop your video if you need to get up and do something so that you just don't forget that you're that you're talking to someone, especially if you're in listen-only mode. You might forget that sometimes people can see you. Um, but don't forget to also turn off your, your, your microphone if you're going to be going uh, to the bathroom, for example, or going maybe to uh, uh, make a sandwich real quick, or someone's at the door and you're in listen only, you want to make sure that other people aren't hearing that as well. So I can mute. Now Laura can't hear me. So when it's on mute and you try to talk, your computer will say you're muted now to kind of let you know I can't hear you. If your mm -hmm. video is on and you're muted, then blah, 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 blah. And usually your participant will say, you're talking, I can't hear you, you're on mute. Um, and it's really nice to have the video function for that reason, because people are signaling at you and can communicate some of those nonverbal gestures that we tend to use in our face-to-face -face communication. So uh, thank you, Laura, for joining me for this sample example of how to do a Zoom call with a participant. Of course. All right. Bye. Bye. Gonna go ahead and hit end meeting for all and that just kicks it all off again i still need to do that update i'll go ahead and get that update done before the next video thanks for joining today